Hi, I'm Gabriella and I go by Feeding Wolves. In this video, I'm going to show you how I set up Face War Studio inside of the MetaHumans project. As an extra bonus, I went ahead and activated the new MVN Live Link plugin for 4.26 and streamed in the body and finger data from Xsense and Manus and recorded all of the data together and created a cinematic sequence with it. Now, everyone's saying that this is a pretty heavy project, so I'm actually using a laptop for this. I'm using the Razer Studio. If you go on Razer's website and you look up this particular model, you're gonna see a video of a filmmaker named Hasdalol who made an entire film in Unreal Engine with this laptop. This is a pretty amazing project, as I've never really been able to find a high quality character model that I can test all of this data on and learn from. So if you wanna learn about facial, body, and finger motion capture data, this is the project for you. So without further ado, let's get started. To get started, we're gonna download Facewear Studio by going on their website. Then we're gonna head over to Glassbox and we're gonna download the Live Client plugin for Unreal. We're gonna create a plugins folder, put the unzipped plugin in there. And when you activate this, you're gonna go and double check in the plugins folder to make sure it's there. We're gonna go ahead and activate the new XSENS MVN Live Link plugin as well. And I'm gonna show you right here how we add a Facewear Live component right there by selecting the character and looking it up. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna double check the configuration. By default, it is automatically at the correct address and port. Next, we're gonna create an animation blueprint. We're gonna select the face archetype. Naming this Facewear Live. Double click. Going to the event graph, right click, uncheck content sensitive, and we're gonna search for get component by class. We're going to go and find Facewear Live component out of target. Get owning actor. Get shape points. Make sure it's under Facewear Live component. Add a shape points, right click, promote to variable. Then with this event blueprint, plug it in. Compile, save, heading over to the animation graph. We're gonna drag in shape points, get shape points. Out of here, we're gonna pull out and look for break face wear data. And this is where all of the data is going to live. If you scroll down, You're going to see all of this information that is coming in from Facewear Studio. Now we're going to have to connect these by creating a modify curve. We're going to select this and make sure it's set to add. Now if you right click and you go to add curve pin and you type in the first thing in that row You're gonna wanna order these in the order they're listed. So when you start connecting them, it's gonna be much easier. So here's what it looks like. I'm gonna scroll down here slowly so you can pause it and take a screenshot. 
it's a lot of stuff. We're gonna scroll down a little more. And some more. And a little more. Okay. So I've added two floats. And I'm gonna connect the brow inner down and the brow down left into the brow down. <clears throat> I'm gonna create another float for the brow down right and I'm gonna connect it to a brow down right. I'm also gonna connect the brow inner down. Now what this does is when the character looks down, it's not just um, the, the inner brow and basically the whole brow pretty much frowns. So for brow inner up, we're gonna go to brow raise. We're gonna connect these now. Now, they're actually not all named the same thing. So you can take a snapshot of how I'm gonna connect these because some of these actually go into more than one. So here you go. Like I look left, I look right. Those plug into two and then the mouth pucker, mouth funnel, mouth press. All right, so once we've completed this, we're gonna go ahead and connect it here, compile, save. Next, we're gonna go and head into Facewear Studio. So we're inside of Facewear and you have the option to either select the camera or import media. I've gone ahead and recorded myself at 30 frames per second. I'm gonna go ahead and calibrate. We're streaming in. Our frame rate is at 30 frames per second. And you also have the option to either use a stationary camera if you're using the pro head cam. I'm gonna go ahead and press play. Now over here on the right, you can make adjustments to the levels. For example, I'm raising his brows. So they're a little more exaggerated. We're gonna go ahead and raise his inner brows up as well. So he looks a little more surprised. We can also make adjustments to the mouth. For example, we can make the jaw wider. There's so many options. And we can save this profile. So once you've created your levels, you can keep them. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and show you that I'm using standard and I have the head deactivated because I'm gonna be getting the head data from Xsense. We're going to go ahead and stream to client. And then we're going to press play inside of Unreal. And we're going to see that our data is playing. Now, if you don't wanna be in play mode, you can just add a live link skeletal component and it'll just play in your viewport. I'm gonna go ahead and record this using sequence recorder because when I use take recorder, for some reason, it takes a really long time to process and sometimes freezes up. I typically use take recorder, but I'm using sequence recorder. And also the animation's playing a little slow because as you can see on the right, the frame rates are really low. We're gonna go ahead and press stop. Now, once we've finished recording, we're gonna go into cinematics. We're gonna type in face wear. Okay, and here's our animation. <clears throat> As you can see, it's playing out. Uh, 
Um, something really cool over here, since you can actually make adjustments to the curves. Um, I played around with these and I think this one is really cool. This is the um, <clears throat> pupil dilating. I think that's really awesome that you can do that. And there's just so much going on here. For example, since I'm saying the alphabet, at some point I say L and you can animate the tongue. So L, L is right there. And we're going to go and find the tongue roll up and we're going to animate her tongue. So it looks like she's saying L. All right, we're going to see where it is. It's not quite there. It's right before it. Okay, let's put this to one. Okay, great. All right, see? L. L. Now, another way you can edit is you can open up a sequencer, add a character in there, delete the control rig boards. Go ahead and bring in an animation for the face. And as you can see, the animation I recorded on the female also works on the male. Now under face, you're going to right click and go to bake to control rig. I've unchecked reduce keys. So it's one to one. And then under face control board, you're going to select additive. As you can see while he's moving his face, there's movement on the control rig as well. And in this particular section, I want to change how his brows are. So I'm going to go ahead and select them. And I'm going to move them and see that brow lateral. I'm also going to go ahead and key this. And in the middle over here, I'm going to make my adjustment. So I'm going to bring these a little down and I'm going to key it right here. And as you can see, you have a lot more control over here. You can really fine tune these animations this way. So this is a lot simpler to edit instead of doing it in the animation curves that I did earlier. Um, if you've ever wondered what this post process over here is, when you click it on and click it off, you notice there is a change. So if you've ever noticed what's going on here, when post process is on, when you typically make a facial expression, this takes it even further. So if you go to your post process animation blueprint, and if you double click on the control rig right here, you're going to find this rig logic and what i believe this is is machine learning so a really good example of that is when she makes a facial expression pay attention to her neck like when she smiles look at that so when you do smile you actually do move other parts of your face and your body, well, particularly the neck. Um, but if you take post-process, you disable it. Look what happens. So this actually calculates based on certain facial expressions, what the rest of the face would do. It kind of plugs in data that for example, Facebook Studio isn't plugging in, it adds to that. That's amazing. Let's disable this again. See that? So when you smile, look at that. Let's look at that. Look at the eyes. She's smiling. Interesting, right? So I just wanted to say thank you 
for taking the time to watch this. And also thank you to everybody at Faceware. Uh, Josh, thank you for taking the time to show me how to set up the blueprints in uh, Unreal. If you want to learn about motion capture for specifically for the face, this is definitely the project that you want to have fun in. And uh, very much look forward to what I get to learn next with this project. So thank you very much. Bye.